Well, this is it, at least of the recap portion. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do Tower of Terror or Toy Story of Terror or whatever that thing's called in the time that the story's forgot, whatever those <laughs> TV specials were. Um, and it turns out Disney has not put Buzz Lightyear of Star Command on the service because I looked for it today because I was going to announce that my next review was going to be Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. And it's not there. Um, it was awkward. Uh, I don't know why, but maybe because it wasn't very good? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but that's their choice. I mean, this would be the time to put it up. This is kind of like a Buzz Lightyear's kind of having his moment. So if you were ever going to put Buzz Lightyear Star Command onto Disney Plus, it would it would be now. So it looks like Toy Story 4 is going to be my last, uh, you know, look back before Lightyear drops on August 3rd on Disney+. Plus. So, uh, I've been hinting at the fact that this is my least favorite of the Toy Story films, but the question is, how much do I not like it compared to the others? You're about to find out. I'm John Stark from MacMovieGuy.com, and this is my second look at Toy Story 4. This is literally my second look. This is actually the second time I've seen this film. Sometimes I use that term and it, it's not, it's like, I've seen a film way more times than that. But this is actually the second time I've seen this film. Um, and it's also the second time with audio description. Before I started picking up my reviews, I actually did see Toy Story 4 on Disney Plus with audio description. And uh, now I'm seeing it again. <laughs> so um, now that I know a little bit more about narrators, I, I was like, oh, Lord Post. Uh, cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I kind of feel the same way about the film. The second time through, it didn't really change. It didn't really move up or move down for me. It just kind of stays the same. The thing is that I truly believe Toy Story 4 is just an extra film that we didn't really need. It's a film that they went for the money, um, which a lot of Pixar films that are sequels are that way. Now, it's something that Toy Story 2 and Toy Story 3 managed to avoid was the feeling that they were cash grabs because they were able to emotionally ground themselves and wrap it wrap up a story. They were able to feel like a legitimate film trilogy that told a complete and cohesive story from films one to three that felt planned in a way that uh, really brought you in. Toy Story 4 is obviously not planned because uh, we've left Andy. <laughs> Andy's gone. And we're with Bonnie, and I don't think in 1995 they were like, okay, so uh, many years from now these toys are going to find themselves with Bonnie, and then we're going to write a movie about how they go rescue Bo Peep. I just don't think that was a thing. Um, I think they kind of looked at Bo Peep heading into Toy Story 3 as being expendable, because she was voiced by Annie Potts, who... I like her, but if we're being honest, her career didn't exactly explode, so they weren't losing like a massive voice talent on the film. And uh, she didn't quite fit into Andy's room. Uh, and I know in Toy Story 4, she's shown as being in his sister's room, but it's still, she's kind of out of place. Um, and uh, then the film kind of just becomes... Woody's longing for Bo Peep, which, you know, I mean, he's always flirted with Bo Peep before. And he also has to babysit Forky, and then he he's, I guess, become irrelevant. Because uh, he's not Bonnie's favorite toy. He was so used to being Andy's favorite toy. But he's not Bonnie's. Um, which is fair, because Bonnie already had toys going into it. And then she inherited, like, a shit ton from Andy at the ex all at one time. So she has a lot of favorite toys to choose from. Um, Forky feels like a phase. Like, Forky's going to be a favorite toy for all of about five seconds. I know that we're like, oh, Forky's really special because he was there for her on the first day of class. And it's like, 
I used to make things out of pipe cleaner too. Those toys didn't stick around for very long. I mean, it's fun. Like the arts and crafts toys were fun, but I didn't like, I didn't keep those for like all of eternity. You know, those toys, they, they went pretty fast. Um, <laughs> they kind of don't hold together very well. <laughs> Forky's not going to survive very long. <laughs> anyway. Um, so Woody feels like he has to constantly rescue Forky, who constantly keeps wanting to jump into the trash. The reasons why I don't like the film is because I feel like it sidelines a lot of the original cast, a lot of the main figures. Uh, it really ups Woody a lot so that he is the central focus because obviously because he has to exit stage right at the end of the film um and uh it forky who's just he's kind of annoying uh it, it's he's it's a bit much it's like it's like at some point <laughs> it's like having somebody on suicide watch who just will not stop killing themselves like will they will just keep finding a new way uh, and at some point you have to go either we're tying this person down to a bed or my own personal health and exhaustion is at risk because this person seems hell bent on doing whatever it is possible to get rid of themselves. Um, and instead of just tying Forky down, <laughs> they keep letting him like hop out and run away or, and it's just kind of exhausting to watch them, how they can't figure out how to just hold Forky and keep him in lockdown. I know the film needs him to escape so that, like, things can happen, but it kind of just becomes monotonous. And in a film where it's always been about friendship and family and and uh, Woody rescuing Buzz or Buzz rescuing Woody, this film just kind of was about... Forky being stupid and everybody having to risk their lives to save this thing because Woody says Forky is special. Um, I know there's the side story with Gabby and the other toys at the carnival and Bo Peep and why Woody stays and the moment. Uh, another reason why Toy Story 4 didn't work for me is the moment between Woody and Buzz doesn't work for me. I didn't, I felt nothing. I felt nothing between two best friends who were saying goodbye to each other. And that, it was rushed. Uh, it wasn't really well set up. Um, it was just kind of like goodbye. And in, in comparison to such the solid ending of Toy Story 3, where, I mean, I, I was just saying you have Bonnie who takes Woody's hand and waves Woody goodbye and and even Andy gets a little bit emotional. I mean, it was so heartfelt and so honest and it was like the right ending. And in this film, you have an opportunity at least to bring, bring it home a little bit um, with Woody and Buzz. And they just, it's just kind of like, see you later. <laughs> like what, it's like two people who can't, like who who have an inability to show each other emotion are saying goodbye to each other it's the like the 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 men the man thing right like we can't show emotion we got no oh, we'll be fine yeah you're gonna it's just it didn't really resonate and um i think that's unfortunate because uh i mean so many people's childhoods are woody and buzz <laughs> um it just it took something that was perfect. It's like if it's like if like tomorrow you found out they were making a Godfather Part Four, you'd be like, "What the fuck are they making a Godfather Part Four for? <laughs> what could that possibly be about?" That's how I felt about Toy Story Four. I was like, "What on earth could Toy Story Four possibly be about?" And then I noticed we have not had any announcements for Toy Story Five or Six. They're not going for like a new trilogy with Bonnie. You know, um, and the toys and trying to shape that one. No, they just felt like they needed one more film to send Woody on his way and show people where Bo Peep was. Like, I guess there were tons of people wondering where Bo Peep was <laughs> all these years. 
I don't know. I just really, I just don't get the existence of this film other than to cash in. But I don't think it served quite the purpose for Pixar that they were hoping. It's not quite as well-reviewed as the other Toy Story films. Didn't do quite as well at the box office as some of you know. So it's just, this is just not, it didn't really, I don't think it really served and did what it was supposed to do. It's it's entertaining. It introduces some new characters that are really good. I did really like Gabby Gabby's storyline. Um, I thought uh, Keanu Reeves's uh, Duke character was was a good addition to the cast. Um, there are some just some interesting moments. I like the fact. I think they could have done more with Woody not being the main character that. Um, you know, that Bonnie likes and trying to figure out who the main character was that Bonnie did like before he takes it upon himself to follow her to kindergarten. You know what I'm saying? It's like he can't give up on it. Well, I guess Dolly is still trying to run the room, but I don't think that Dolly is the favorite toy based on Bonnie's toy selections all the time. So I don't know who who does run the room. Does Dolly just run the room because she's always run the room? Um, it's it's kind of hard to tell if Bonnie even has a favorite toy. So there are some other things that we could have done here to sort of um, bring that story in a little bit better. But uh, we really just wanted Forky. Uh, we really just wanted to make Forky happen so he could go ask some questions on Disney+. Plus. And, uh, that was, that was what was most important. So, um, this is a cash grab. Audio description's fine. It does not have a memorable song. It's like Toy Story 3, where, sadly, Randy Newman is, has given up at this point. <laughs> it just, just said, screw it. Uh, he's like, listen, I gave you, you got a friend in me. Uh, I'm out. I'm tapped. Uh, <laughs> you know, call somebody else up and make them write a memorable song. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's not the first three films. I'm sorry. I gave Toy Story 1 and 2 A pluses. I gave Toy Story 3 an A. And I'm giving Toy Story 4 a B minus. Honestly, I love the shit out of these characters. And even when they're at their weakest, I would still watch them. Uh, you know, just like I watched little Toy Story tunes and that the one that Time forgot and the Toy Story of Terror and all those things. I watched them because I love these characters and they maintain the original voice cast throughout those things. Which is why I'm terrified for Lightyear is because... They went for Chris Evans instead of Tim Allen. And one of the things that's always saved all of those little shorts and all of those little things that they've done before is that they've always gotten these guys to come back and do the original voices. And now we've got Chris Evans. So we'll see. I have not seen Lightyear yet. This is my last Toy Story movie heading into Lightyear. Will I like Lightyear more or less than Toy Story 4? I don't know. But uh, we're going to find out and uh, just shortly in a few days. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Am I too harsh on Toy Story 4? Did you expect it to be lower or higher based on my previous grades? Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can check out my reviews also at MacMovieGuy.com. Uh, you can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org and see what movies have audio description where you can find them and the adna.org and uh see what else laura post has been up to like i said light years next so i guess to infinity and beyond right see you then